Hey everybody, my name is Dan McGorgas, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, we were trying to get on the good side of Sayori. We wrote her the perfect poem, and of course the whole concept of treating others better than we actually treat ourselves. Which is something, you know, you gotta treat yourself better sometimes before you can treat others, but let's see what happens. Who should I show my poem to first? Let's just go with Sayori first. See what she thinks. She should like it. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Tan. Eh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's? Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh, well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a damn poem. Yeah, 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 yeah. She gets it. And that makes it feel extra special. Hey. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. Alright. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in a club room. Um, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean uh, I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Dan. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. Yeah. Freaking music. It's got that reggae. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. But then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. You'll be my poem too, right? Don't worry, it's really bad. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me, me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If I wasn't, if it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. She just wants breakfast. Okay, that's, that's nice. Palm to, to the sun. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait till this morning to write this? No, just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. 
Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it, that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. <laughs> I want breakfast. I made eggs and toast. <laughs> hey, that's what's up. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever! Well, I guess I look forward to it. Should I show him to? Okay, I guess we'll just go down the line. What's up, Natsuki? Question mark. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. Is it like I said it was bad? It just didn't evoke my emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. That's about it. Okay. Hey, very minimalistic. Um... Yeah! I told you you're gonna like it! I like it! What? Just be honest! I am! Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well... Because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated stuff! People don't even take my writing seriously! But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard! Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling on the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be pro. Hmm. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Oh, and suppose what's confusing is that supposedly they're all 18. I I'm sure for, you know, to cover all the bases, but apparently they're all 18, but they have like different years. You know, first year, third year, so... Uh, they're all 18, we'll just go with that. She's the youngest 18. She's, you know, she's... <laughs> she's 18, but just 18 in a month. Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. You should care how old they are whatever your agenda is, but they all 18, we good. Who should I show my poem to next? All right, Yuri, let's go. Mm. Yuri stares at the poem. 
A minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh. So sorry. I forgot to start speaking. It happens a lot. It happens sometimes. Um... It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading, though. Oh, see. So okay. I see how it is. Uh, so is that bad? No! Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry! Yuri blush buries her face in her hands. But she's not. Her hands are all like... I know, I'm, I'm just fucking with the game. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on, us, on them. I think the m most noticeable thing I've recognized in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can bl be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a, a bit biased though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles streamingly as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Oh, fancy. Ghost. Under the light, the, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calms, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Man, fuck you, light. I see you. You flicking me off, light? You flicking me off? Okay, so she writes, great, you know, very well. It's still trippy, but. Uh, I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it was short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. Really glad you like it. I'll be honest, 
Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, Dan. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. Exactly. What they go through sometimes gets represented in that poem or that literature a lot. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. In scene. <laughs> That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. All right, Monica. Hey, hey, Monica. Hey, 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 Monica. Hey, Dan. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, have you ever, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we could do better, I'm always listening. I'm always watching, Wazowski. Always watching, always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your bow with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Dan. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm -hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Okay, so she knows. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if he had those sort of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. Exactly. Sometimes you might not expect to have similarities with people that you're like, I don't know if I have much in common with them. But you find it. You never know. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. Exactly. Everyone shows their appreciation and love and support for each other in different ways. You just have to accept it. You can't expect, oh, well, I love you in this way, and they don't love you the same way. They're doing it in their own form. You have to accept that. You can't force it. And then that's not love or whatever. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing was kind of a gentle feel. Has kind of a gentle feel to it. I could tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy could enjoy sad things too? Yeah, she's very bittersweet. A little bit of duality. That's always chill. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little either. 
I'm sure I'll end up trying different th things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always keep help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Yeah, totally. Not trying to impress you all. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? Like, sometimes you just have to sound confident and believe in yourself, even if you know deep down you're not really. But if you can, like, portray it, it might become more authentic than, like, faking it. You know, you're, you're actually enjoying yourself. I see. Well, let's read it then. Um... Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor. An angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. Bright. It wasn't too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he on the other side was looking in. Whoa! That's interesting, I like that. So, what do you think? Mmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. So I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ha <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well... I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. Okay. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Okay. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. True. It's like a writer's block. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Yeah, you can always revise it. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. Hey. Her, tip, her message of the day, her tip of the day. I appreciate it. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay. Whew. Okay. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. <sighs> I guess... That's what I ended up getting myself into. 
Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chat chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. Like, I smile sadly. What's with this language? Uh, did you, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say, or, I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the stimulus or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How could that be cute? Uh, I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh. You mean, you have to try so hard to come up with something nice to say? <laughs> Thanks, but it really doesn't come out nice at all! Um, well, I have a couple suggestions. Hmm. <laughs> well, I was, if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Yori liked it, and Dan did too. So based on that, I'm glad. I'll gladly give you some suggestions. Oh no! First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change it anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Dan liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Oh. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress a new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Dad appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Uh, and how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make sh everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh, girl fight, cat fight, get her! We got the circus music. I don't know what's going on. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I went to the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Dan started showing up. And here we are. Oh, your boobs just magically. I'm having too much fun. Natsuki! Ah, uh, Natsuki, that's a little... Nat and Yuri. This doesn't involve you! This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly both girls tur toward turn towards me <laughs> as if they just noticed I was standing there. She, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get, o get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. That's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason. <laughs> the reading should jump out at the reader, not force him to have to figure it out. Let me explain that to her, Diane. Oh, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. 
It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Yeah, sometimes you, to effectively get something across, you gotta use big words. I can agree with that. There's only, sometimes those are the only words that fit it, but... Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Dan? Um... Well? Well? Uh, how did I get dragged to this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. I'm gonna leave it off here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Let me know if you've ever played Doki Doki Literature Club, or if you want me to keep playing it. The Playful Philosopher quote of the day is, Reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. Mason Cooley. And that's as appropriate because, of course, literature. And yeah, reading takes you to places, whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, you know, some kind of romantic novel. It takes you to a place, you know, mentally. And especially during this whole quarantine stuff, since going to places and traveling is not the most good idea or whatever. It's good to escape, whether it be a book or a video game or a movie. I'll leave a playlist on screen right now for Doki Doki Literature Club, and also a playlist to Remothered Broken Porcelain, another horror game I've been recently playing. And also a random video. And if you like the video, consider subscribing, share it with a friend, hit that notification bell, you know, say what's up. And I will see you all in the next video. Later.